If you had to start again at complete point zero, what order would you learn everything on guitar? Well, that's what I asked myself, and these were the results. 1. Core learning. Before you learn any major techniques on guitar, you should try to get your technique optimal. Things like posture, holding the guitar, holding the pick, thumb placement, and alternate picking, for instance. This might take you a couple of days before you get the hang of it, but it's essential to get done. Many people just start learning immediately and go months without recognizing their huge mistakes. But by the time they finally do realize, it's so much harder to correct them than it would have been at the start. Also, really quickly, make sure to subscribe so I can continue to help and educate guitarists like you. I've already done a video on how to learn guitar online for cheap, make sure to watch that if you haven't already. Anyway, two, open chords. The first thing I learned on guitar was, from memory, the E major chord. And there's a reason that chords are the first thing most guitarists learn. They build dexterity and finger strength in a simple way, and instantly unlock a massive catalogue of songs to play along to. Starting with the essential open major chords, so A, C, D, E, and G, and then building your way to minor chords. Chords are the building blocks of all music, and are undoubtedly the first step in learning guitar. I would also like to sprinkle in a little bit of music theory into your learning here, as it's a highly overlooked aspect of guitar. 3. Scales I know I just said that chords are the building blocks of music, but scales are the building blocks of chords, meaning that they could be considered building blocks too. Either way, they're both essential for technique and theory. I would start with the basic major and minor scales, just in the key of A while you get familiar, and then start to shift the positions around the neck. From there, I would also learn the minor pentatonic and slowly shift that around the neck too. Here is also where you should really focus on theory too. I can't cover everything in this video, but a brief rundown here. The first note, third note, and the fifth note in the major scale make the major chord of that key. If you move the third note down one fret or semitone, you get the minor version. And all the notes within any scale will sound good together because they're in the same key. Once you get familiar with this concept, you can start improvising and solving, but just make sure to really get familiar with scales and chords first. 4. Songs Now that you've built up a bit of dexterity and you know your open chords, it's time to start learning some songs, if you haven't already. ACDC and Nirvana have plenty of beginner-friendly riffs. Playing along to songs will also improve your timing, which is a crucial aspect of guitar. Quick note here, just because we start exploring more territory on guitar as the video goes on, doesn't mean that you should stop practicing what has already been mentioned. Ideally, you merge it all into scheduled practice sessions, which is the ideal way to learn. Around here is also where you should start learning techniques such as hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, etc. As you get better, you'll start learning more difficult songs more easily, and we're now getting into more advanced territory, and what I would call the intermediate phase. 5. Bar chords and advanced chords. You knew this would come up at some point. Around this stage is where a lot of guitarists stop and plateau. And there's a reason, because for a little bit here, it gets really damn hard. If you aren't already familiar, let me explain the idea behind bar chords for you. So, whenever you play an open chord, the nut is where the chord starts. If you want to move up your chord fret, you'll notice it just sounds really bad because the nut doesn't move up with you, and all the open strings stay in a different key. This is where bar chords come in. Essentially, you replicate the nut by placing your index finger across the strings, like this. This takes a lot of finger strength, but it gets pretty easy eventually. Once you unlock this skill, many previously difficult chord changes become far easier, and you unlock countless different chord voicings. This stage in learning is also where you should be learning 7th chords, augmented and diminished chords, etc. These all unlock a lot in your playing for both song learning and song writing. This brings us on to the next technique, improvisation and more scales. As I mentioned before, getting familiar with scales is what leads us to improvisation and solos. Essentially, you're just playing certain notes with certain scales that sound good together. At the start, your improvisation will be very basic. You're not going to be jumping many strings or notes and sticking to one scale, usually the minor pentatonic. This is where the importance of getting familiar with the shapes and scales comes through. 
Around here is where you should be learning the harmonic minor, major pentatonic, more modes, etc. to really advance your playing and your knowledge of the fretboard. Many players also start using the caged system to help with their improvisation, but I've personally heard some very mixed feelings about it. Anyway, there's a pretty large leap from here on to the next stage of playing, but if you've made it here, then you're already considerably further than 90% of guitar players ever reach. 7. Advanced techniques and theory, and going your own way. By now, I imagine you're a highly competent guitar player. This is where you start bridging into some really technical stuff, such as fast legato lines, trem picking, two-hand tapping, hinge harmonics, songwriting, and advanced theory. But now that you're here, you need to make a really important decision. Where do you go now? You can start learning some really difficult songs and getting fast, or you can start learning fingerstyle and go that way. The point is that around here is where you really start specialising in one area. That might be blues, that might be jazz, that might be metal, or you might not specialise in one genre at all and stay as a well-rounded guitar player. But either way, I think around here is where you can really start paving your own path while still practising everything you've learned up to this point. The methods you use to learn everything, challenging songs, tutorials, tab, etc. will stay the same, but you have a bit more freedom now than ever before on what to do and where to go. Good luck.